everyone. Hello. My name is Jacqueline. And I'm Sam. And we're from the Make Code team. And in this video, we're going to give you a quick tour around some of the new features and capabilities that are coming out in the new Make Code for Microbit update. Yeah. And um, you can get to this update actually today at makecode.microbit.org slash beta. And we have a release date for this update, right, Sam? When yes. are we releasing? Um, I think it's the 26th. October 26th, so mark your calendars. Um, this is coming out very shortly. So without further ado, let's dive into some of the new features and capabilities that we've got for everyone in here. Yeah, um, before we do that, just a few things to note. Um, this new release will ensure that all of your previous programs still work. That's right. So if you've written a bunch of programs and scripts using the old editor, no worries at all. They will all totally work in this new version of the editor too. Okay, let's jump in. So the first thing you'll notice when you go to this new update is that we've got this new home screen. So that's the first landing um, page that you'll see. And this, this screen is where you'll find all of your projects, your previous projects that you've created, a way to create a new project, and a way to explore some of the tutorials and examples that we've got in store for you. So I think we used to be able to access this page, the, some of this content, um, but it was... Yeah, so a lot of the feedback we got was that it was a lot, a lot of these examples and tutorials were hidden away in a menu bar. And so this is a way to make it a lot more discoverable um, and, um, and you can access all these tutorials um, immediately. Yeah, so it's just kind of a one, one page to sort of see everything, all the content that you've, you've, you've got access to. So let's go ahead and create a new project. Um, and the first thing you'll notice here is that the blocks look a little bit different. Yeah, and they are all the same colors. They're called the same thing. They're in the same categories but they just look a little bit brighter, fresher is what I would say. Yeah, and so what we've done here is we've adopted the scratch blocks look and feel for these for, for our blocks, and what that's given us is uh, a, a much bigger blocks um, so that it's more optimized for um, those of you on touch devices. That's um, right, so yeah, so if I use my finger to move some of these blocks around, yeah. um, it makes it a lot easier to move around to and to, to connect them together. Yeah. So another thing that comes with this change is this um, shadow as you kind of drag blocks close to another block to connect to them. Mm. You'll notice that there's this shadow behind it that kind of gives you an idea of, of what the block, it, where the block is going to be placed and what's it, what it's going to look like. Another thing you'll see is as you connect it is that there's this highlight around mm -hmm. where the block is going to go. So you can kind of see that as I sort of drag between these two blocks. Great. Um, and then what other, what other changes have we made to the block shape? Yes. So instead of the two different puzzle pieces for statements or inputs, now we just have the one. It's just for statements. You'll find a puzzle piece that allows you to connect things together. However, inputs now are sort of in line. And so you'll notice there are three different types of inputs and depending on the type of the, the data type you'll they'll have slightly different shapes mm -hmm. but they all kind of work in the same way in order to insert a um an input into another block you just kind of insert it inside of the block just like that mm -hmm. and can you talk a little bit about the differences between numbers strings and boolean data types yeah so the kind of the main data types that we have are those three and those two look slightly different. So we'll start with the with booleans, so the true or false. Those look a little bit like diamonds. They're kind of diamond shaped. Yeah. Yep. They, they've got a hex on the side. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of to just to differentiate them a little bit from some of the other other types. So true or false will be diamonds, and numbers and strings are all kind of round. Yeah, with the exception that strings kind of have these quotes around them to kind of indicate right. that this is a this is a string and this is much more aligned with JavaScript um, and some other programming languages. Great. Um, anything else about blocks? Yeah, so let's take a look at some of the new new field editors. So the on shake block here. What we've got here is if you click on that one, it's no longer just a list yeah. of, um, of different gestures. Now we've got kind of 
um, these pictures that sort of give you an idea of what each gesture is. It's kind of hard sometimes even for us to tell the difference between logo and screen up and yeah. some of these other ones and all the different G's and yeah, so this is kind of a way for you to kind of visualize what, what it is that, um, what the micro bit's kind of doing. So the shake is kind of when you shake it, mm -hmm. screen up's kind of when you hold the screen up like this, mm -hmm. logo up's like that. Um, and so you'll kind of uh, sort of get a better idea of that. Yeah, I love this block. It's a fun block to use in your program. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, and then do you want to talk, a, yeah, a little bit about the show LED block? Yes. So the show LED block mostly looks the same, um, but it's got a, um, we've upgraded the, um, the interaction that we have with it. So um, now you can kind of just click and sort of paint over the block. And you don't have to kind of click on every single um, uh, LED on its own to kind of paint something. So, mm -hmm. And then obviously if you click back, um, you can kind of paint with the off color. And of course you can still kind of click each one separately. Yep, and you'll notice that the lights turned on in the show LED block are white instead of red. Yes, we, we received a bunch of feedback about sort of the distortion between red and, and blue, and so we've, we've, we've resorted to just white for on and then just kind of the darker color for off. Mm -hmm. Although you'll notice in the simulator, the lights still do show up as red like they would on the micro bit. Yep. All right, um, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the if statements? Yes, absolutely. So the if statements and the 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 cogwheel. Yes, we loved the cogwheel, um, <laughs> <laughs> but we had to we had to kill it, unfortunately. But we've got a better solution for for everyone than the cogwheel. A lot yeah. of the feedback we received around the cogwheel was a it was an awkward interface to use. B people didn't even know it was there. Um, and so you can, you'll notice on these um, if statements that we've got these pluses and minus icons um, as a way to uh, collapse or expand um, the, the clauses here. Yep. Um, and the same sort of thing uh, applies for arrays as well. So mm -hmm. in order to add and remove items in the array, instead of using the, the cogwheel, we've just got plus and minus um, icons to, to do that. Yep, much more intuitive um, and easier to, to find. All right, the next thing that we want to show is variables. So um, you'll notice in the variables toolbox here, um, we're missing some blocks. So we had some some default variables. I think it was item was our default variable. Yeah. Um, but we've received a lot of feedback from um, computer science teachers that they really wanted a more streamlined process for students to create their own variables and name their own variables. and so. Um, we've, we've done that now with this make a variable button. Students have to create their own variables, and when they do, then we populate all of the variable blocks. Yeah. Once the variable is created, you can go ahead and use it in the same way, mm -hmm. whether you're referencing it or setting it or changing it um, in your code. Great. And then certainly, last but not least, probably the biggest change we've yeah. made in this update is, Sam, drum roll. Floating points. <laughs> <laughs> so all the you math teachers out there, I'm sure you've been waiting for this um, this update for a while now. Um, we do have support for floating point arithmetic and decimals. So now, um, if you use any of the um, division math operands, for example, so Sam's going to show you here an example of um, what are we going to divide? Um, let's say seventeen. 17 divided by 3. All right, what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> we will find out. Let's find out. It's, uh, what? Just rewrite that. 20? Oh, it's plus. Whoops. Oh. Got the wrong one. <laughs> Divide. All right. I know my math is bad, but not that bad. All right, and it okay. is 5.67. So yes, we have support to know. for decimal <laughs> math. So a big change here. All right, so what I would say is for any educators who have created their lesson plans um, using Make Code for the Microbit, or if you're a publisher or other content creator, now would be a great time to update all of your materials. So the design for this release is locked. There's not gonna be any more changes. So if you wanna go to the slash beta, 
site and update all of your materials, feel free to do so. Um, some tips on how to update your content. Sam, you want to talk a little bit about what they can do? Yeah, and these, these aren't new features. They're just kind of giving you a few tips yeah. to sort of um, get to some of these new screenshots and new ways to kind of include uh, code in your website. And so let's say I've got this bit of code here and I just kind of want to download a, a screenshot of it. Um, instead of kind of taking a screenshot with my own software and getting all the background and, and um, you can kind of get a very clean screenshot just by uh, right clicking on the workspace and then going down to download screenshot. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Mm -hmm. That'll just give you a PNG yep. with a transparent background and all of your blocks formatted nicely. Yep. Um, so that's one way to get content in there. Another way would be to actually share the project. And so that kind of gets um, uploaded. And then from here, we have uh, this embed um, link over here that lets you um, sort of embed the, the code that you just shared in a few different ways. So you just code it, that you can embed the, the blocks or the editor or even just the simulator. So let's take a look at what that looks like for the simulator. So if we just copy this bit of code here and place it in our website, so I've got um, JS Fiddle running here. I'll just paste this guy here. And let's run that. And you notice that we've got our code running that we just created earlier mm -hmm. with the uh, 5.67, 17 divided by three. <laughs> That's right. And you can take a look at how this looks. Um, if you go to the microbit.org website, there are some lesson plans here. Um, so here, for example, uh, if you scroll down, you can see some of the code snippets that, that have been embedded. Um, and this is a great way to, to include dynamic content. So any changes will get automatically up, updated here. Um, we do have more information on how to do this in our documentation. So if you go to uh, makecode.microbit.org and you go to our documentation slash docs, you'll find this blocks embedded uh, information on how to do this here. Yeah. All right. Anything else we need to tell folks about this upcoming release? I think that's it. We hope you enjoy it. Yeah. And thanks for listening. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.